How are we doing? You guys ready? Perfect. Well, thank you all for joining me here today. Today I am joined by Mayor Paul Tenhaken. I appreciate him welcoming me to the city and my team. Uh, my team has been on the ground here uh, assisting with some of the actions that we've seen throughout the city recently. And then I also am joined by my Secretary of Public Safety, um, Price, and also joined by General Walls, who is uh, very integral to the planning and strategic purposes of our National Guard actions throughout the state of South Dakota. Protests have a purpose. Um, that purpose um, was met yesterday in a peaceful protest that I think for many people honored the memory of George Floyd, but also recognized that we have to take action, all of us personally responsible to make sure that we're doing all that we can to make sure that people are treated fairly and that laws are followed and that um, we are protecting those that are the most vulnerable about us, no matter what situation that they're in. Um, that agenda changed last night, later on into the evening, uh, and there is no one in the country that disagrees with the sentiments of the peaceful protest that happened earlier in the day, but uh, with the sentiments that were expressed late last night is where we find contention and disagreement and will not uh, allow it to continue in South Dakota into the future. Today, the conversation isn't about the peaceful protest. Um, it's about the violence that happened last night, and violence will not be tolerated in South Dakota. I take the protection of rights very seriously, including the right to peacefully protest. Uh, but rioting and looting will not be tolerated. Uh, mob rule and violence do nothing to honor uh, those victims and their memory. Uh, let me put a face to what happened last night. Our police were attacked. They were hit with rocks. They were obscenities screamed at them and gestures. Property was destroyed. Business owners were victimized. Stores were looted and vandalized. Folks, we have state vehicles that are used to haul uh, hard of hearing and deaf children to appointments every day that were damaged last night, that those families no longer will have services available to them because of the actions that were taken by the rioters that were in Sioux Falls. Uh, these aren't protesters that did these actions last night. These are violent criminals. Do not call them protesters. Change only happens if we create change. City councils, county commissioners, the state legislature, they are all open to solutions. I am open to solutions. I have charged my team with finding legislative action that we can pursue, with finding resources and tools that I have available to me to address what's going on, not just in our state, but in our country. And I would encourage all of you to do that too that now is not the time to continue to point to problems without offering valid solutions that will actually create a better country and a world for our kids and our grandkids to grow up in. The question before us is what do we want for policies and policing in our cities in the future? What do we want it to look like? Let's be problem solvers here today and work together. Um, I'm gonna leave here and with the mayor and key Members of his team and my team, we're going to go talk to some of the victims last night and visit with them and get their insight and their wisdom. Uh, but I want you to know there is no other governor in this country that has trusted her people more than I have. And I still do trust the folks of this state to do the right thing, and the vast majority of them made the right decision last night. But I am asking all of you today to make sure that we work together, that we work together to address the challenges we have in front of us, but know that whatever we do together will put us in a much better situation and help us be successful uh, in the coming days. So with that, I wanna turn it over to the mayor to give a few words, and then we'll certainly take your questions. And Secretary Price and General Walls will be available for questions as well. All right, thank you, Governor. And I just wanna briefly make a couple remarks. Uh, one is I, I wanna thank the governor. I wanna thank, uh, the Highway Patrol, the Guard, uh, for the support they provided the city uh, the last 24 hours and will continue to provide the city. There was a whole lot of behind the scenes legwork that was going on the last several days to ensure that we were properly resourced for what happened last night. Um, and I'll tell you that you have in this city and in the state uh, very pro-law enforcement um, leadership who will not tolerate unlawful acts. 
as the governor stated, peaceful protest is our constitutional right. When it crosses that line, we're ready to act in South Dakota. And we're doing that already. Uh, even since our presser this morning, uh, we have uh, found more people through video and surveillance that we're ready to prosecute. And so I'll tell you, um, there's a lot more cameras than people realize when you're doing these things. And there's a lot more evidence out there than you may realize. And so whether it's in Sioux Falls or whether it's in Rapid City or Pierre or wherever, uh, I know the governor, uh, the guard, uh, the Department of Security, um, Secretary Price, they're taking this seriously. And so um, I want to thank them for their support in this. Uh, we also just had a meeting and a briefing, and Sioux Falls wanted to reinforce to the state, too, that we're ready to provide support as well, should it be needed uh, in other parts of the state. Obviously, our priority continues to be making sure Sioux Falls stays a safe community. Uh, we need to balance that, but we also stand uh, ready and willing to support uh, our other peer cities across the state uh, and uh, the state's office as well in uh, any response that may be needed. So uh, thank you, thank you, Governor, for uh, the work of the last 24 hours. Uh, and with that, I will turn it back over to the Governor to field any questions for uh, herself or uh, General Walls or Secretary Price. That sounds great, thank you. What kind of questions do we have? Yes, sir. Yeah. We do not have any plans right now, but that doesn't mean that some can't be planned in the coming days. Uh, we'll see uh, how that's facilitated uh, going forward. I do want to remind everybody that we are doing mass testing at several different facilities throughout the state, um, at different production facilities, businesses that have requested it. We're also running mass testing outreach to our tribal nations and uh, throughout the state, and then also our assisted living and nursing home facilities. So that's been going very well. Uh, and that situation with those that attended the protest will have to continue to evaluate our ability to facilitate something like that. Governor, uh, have you heard of any of the protests happening in other cities around the state, and are there any steps that have been taken to protect those cities? There are uh, planned protests in other cities in the state of South Dakota. We'll continue to be prepared like we were here in Sioux Falls with resources pre-staged where they may be necessary. Well, we have the entirety of the National Guard at our disposal, but they all have different training and skill sets and equipment that's available to us. So that assessment is ongoing, and where they should be deployed to and strategically located is still being decided. Have you had any conversations with uh, event organizers in some of your teams? Uh, we have members of my team that have. I haven't specifically, but I have been talking to mayors in other town towns that know that there are planned um, activities in their communities and so we're helping to facilitate those conversations and see what they may need to make sure that it is a peaceful protest and doesn't turn into a riot much like we saw last night here in Sioux Falls. At this point is the National Guard still activated here in Sioux Falls? The state, uh, the Guard is still on state active duty uh, and so we will continue to keep them uh, on that kind of status, um, but we also know numbers may change, their locations may change, and that's not information I'm willing to share at this time. Other questions? Any you know, I would say any injury is serious. Um, I think there was um, law enforcement that have injuries. Um, you know, it appears that our National Guard personnel are, are doing pretty well, but the significant size of the rocks and the actions that were taken last night, um, you know, had some consequences for individuals. I think there, I expect there was probably injuries to those that maybe even wanted to peacefully protest or were just there um, on location. So that's what we'll continue to gather information on and make sure people are taken care of. You know, that's what I'm going to ask people to help with. We have been looking at our statutes and, and seeing uh, what we can do to, to facilitate um, fairness and law and order and making sure that people's voices are heard, but that it's something that actually makes a difference. You know, we have been having um, this conversation about race and inequality for decades in this country. And a lot of politicians and public figures stand up and talk 
and uh, frankly, I'm more interested in what we can do. Um, and so I'm, I'm hopeful that the people of South Dakota will recognize they have a governor here who wants to work with them, that's willing to help champion real common sense solutions to make a difference in this realm, uh, and that now is the time to sit down at a table and to start having those conversations. It really would put us in a path to have a better future to where 10 years from now we're not having this conversation. A year from now, we know that we're farther down the path to fixing the problem and that we really are a state um, that believes every single person has equal opportunity to be successful and be happy here in, in South Dakota. You're about a month away from your new rise to spring law going into mm -hmm. effect. Is that something that would have impacted last night's event if it was in effect? You know, that's uh, regards to civil penalties more so than criminal activities. Uh, definitely what we saw last night was criminal activities. Um, and, and the civil uh, penalties as well um, always are a consideration, and if the statute applies it in the future, it will. But um, I, that it was necessary legislation to make sure that we have tools ready when they are required to make sure that we're being fair and, and just and that we're facilitating peaceful protests. I think we saw very clearly the stark contrast, um, that, that we de believe firmly and will always defend the right for freedom of speech and people's ability to peacefully protest. Um, that changed last night, and I think South Dakotans got a real glimpse of what can happen uh, when that goes, steps over the line and it becomes violent. Other questions?